Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I'm going to deviate a little bit from what I normally talk about, and I'm going to include a little bit of vault in this video. I was recently approached by a customer who is looking to rename some of the members in his iPart table, and he wanted to also ensure that the assemblies that were using those iPart members wouldn't be adversely affected. So here's an example. I've just got a simple wooden plank part. And as I look at it, it's got a set of members within this folder. Okay. And then there's also some assemblies that utilize those parts from the IPART table. So we've got a couple different scenarios where we want to make sure that we can rename the members effectively and we want to ensure that it doesn't break any of our existing assemblies that use the members. So before I get too far into it, there is one critically important thing that I found through all my testing as I was building this workflow. You must remove the files from your local workspace. So I don't have the assemblies in testing, I don't have the parent iPart file here and I don't have any of the members in my local workspace. So we're going to do everything through the vault. The other thing is, if you want to update the member name, you actually update the members and rename them themselves, not in the iPart table. That's kind of the weird bit with vault. So if I wanted to rename these, and I'm gonna pick this one because it's used in both or oops, sorry, where used, it's used in both assemblies. I think this one might be as well. No, either way, but that's good. So I wanna pick on these two and I'm gonna rename them. So you can rename multiple files. So I'll right click, choose the rename option and then <clears throat> hit next. And we can see that not only is it gonna update these, but it's also going to impact the parent file, which is what we want. So I hit next and this is where we actually want to rename them. But before I do that, it asks if you want to update the part number, make sure that you say yes there. There's a little checkbox too. If you didn't want one to be updated, you could do that. But just want to make sure we update the part numbers. And then let's see which one, the 24. We're going to make this an oak board. And we'll make this one say a walnut board. So you can name them the same, you can copy paste. Yeah, I don't have a numbering scheme active, but you could use a numbering scheme. And then we'll hit finish. So that go, is gonna update a few files. It's a pretty relatively easy change. You'll see we do now have the oak and the walnut. And if we go to our testing, we'll see that these files also got updated and there's the oak and the walnut. And then this one should have the oak. There you go. So by doing this in vault, it does update those assemblies. Couple of things that you'll wanna do, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and verify that. It's always a good idea to double check the iPart factory first. So I'll go ahead and open that up. I don't wanna check it out in this case because I just wanna look at it. So we'll load it up in Inventor. There we go. And uh, I still don't want to check it out. <laughs> it's a very persistent selection. But I do want to take a look at the table. And there's Oak and Walnut. And you can see it did update the part number. So before you get too far, I do strongly recommend that you grab a copy of that iPart factory and make sure that the changes, even if you just spot check it, make sure those changes occurred as you would desire. Now the next part, there's a couple ways that I would, I would do this, but I'm gonna start out by opening my file in Vault, so I don't need this anymore. Nah. I will open from the Vault one of my test files. So we're gonna find my designs. Oops, about the level, there we go. Do, do, find my iParts, there we go. 
and then there's a testing. So I want to grab this first one and I'm just going to open it. Read only. So I'll open that up. And there we can see it came across with the oak and the walnut. Everything is up to date and doing great. So because we didn't have a local copy, there was nothing to get confused. If you do have a local copy in place, when you try to open up these changes and you try to refresh it, it actually gets confused and it will try to check out the iPart factory and the members as well. So I, it just is much cleaner, much easier to get rid of everything on the local workspace and just open from vault. Another way that we could do this is as long as there's nothing in the local workspace, we could also get the file like so. And now that we've gotten the file, we should be able to open that within Inventor as well. And again, we got it. It's been updated with the Oak, nothing to refresh. We should be good to go. So that is a workflow for renaming iPart members, having that update and impact the iPart factory file. And then we grab any assembly that we need that was using those member rows. We open that up from the vault and everything should come across just fine. Again, critically important, make sure there are no local copies that makes the process much more difficult. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.